Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Before I share my thoughts today evening, I would like to start with a small story. A story of a young boy who is walking across the beach and constantly he is trying to throw all the starfishes back into the sea. A man who is patiently away and he is observing all this approaches the boy. What are you doing? The boy says that I'm trying to throw back all these starfishes back into the sea. And if I don't do it, they all will die. The curious man says, what difference are you trying to make? The boy says, by bending down again, picking up a starfish and throwing it back to the sea. And says, I made a difference to this one. So the moral of the story is that in order to make a change, the quantum is never an important parameter. Change is always tangible, no matter how, how big or small. And second, in order to lead change, I feel that we have to go beyond our regular scope of work. Now, talking about my experience that how was I able to lead change uh, in the last few years of my industry, which has been quite modest, uh, as a future leader participant of IAG Hotels and Resorts by, uh, in the year 2016, I was blessed to get this opportunity to work directly with the CEO. And uh, since I had spent some time with the frontline colleagues of the hotel, the bellboys and the stewards learning the ropes, I proposed to him that, okay, you are going to the hotel, why don't you also connect and, you know, share ambition and talk about the growth and development of Frontline, because the size of the Frontline uh, colleagues in any hotel is very big. And then I took this as a project to drive change and impact the lives of these people as a self-volunteer project, wherein I initiated a comprehensive engagement plan for the CEO to directly uh, connect with the Frontline colleagues. The impact was humongous to an extent that these people were also sent from the corporate office, personalized cards. Now imagine an electrician in a hotel is getting his picture signed by the autograph of the, of the CEO. So it's a huge, huge, huge uh, cultural shift in an organization. So we, rec we received some great feedback around that. And now talking about the change that I, have, I aspire to lead in the years to come, like in 2019, I initiated this non-profit, non-commercial uh, network of uh, hoteliers. So the idea and the intent is to continue mentoring and coaching young hoteliers, specifically people who are in hospitality schools and young professionals in the industry. And I was inspired because there was so many messages at times, especially from the young hoteliers, what part to choose and which stream to take in hospitality. And I feel this has become even more relevant after COVID because recently we saw the reports, I'm not sure if you did or not, uh, Bloomberg published a report that there has been a drastic slump in number, uh, in number of admissions in the universities in the United States. And uh, I'm very pleased and humbled to share that till date, uh, as you see, you know, we collaborated, I created a team around five people. We have been able to guide 300 students so as they are able to reinstill their faith in the industry. Thank you so much. Questions, anyone? Yes, please. <laughs> Sorry? No, I don't think so that there is a, a breakdown of trust, but I feel uh, when we talk about the development of people, imagine and I, as I said that, you know, at a young age, I got this opportunity to work with the CEO. So I was just assisting him, like, you know, a, a symbolic assistant. And I, since I spent some time, so whenever a CEO of a hotel company is walking across the hotel and he's meeting the strategic talent in HOD and the bellboy who's helping with the luggage, so he also has that strong ambition to shake hands with the CEO, which generally, as I mentioned, because of the size of the uh, frontline colleagues, it's not possible for any leader to have that. So then I created this... Uh, campaign so that you know whosoever is the top performer in front lines uh, so we strategically kept all the leaders managerial posts out of this uh, recognition program and there was a great 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 enthusiasm among the frontline colleagues that you know i think it just enhances the trust is further strengthened it never breaks down a question if i mean uh, as you as you referred to very very rightly there's a huge challenge rec recruiting and hiring talent right in hospitality if you were to talk to a young person tomorrow and try to encourage them to join the industry what would you say to them i would just since i'm from the industry so i will be the ambassador of course and uh, in fact here in the summit also the people who have been here uh, participating from hague school and other and it was very interesting conversation i had with them yesterday you know in pandemic layoffs happened so you know there I think I would definitely tell that, you know, it's a learning for industry as well. Industry never experiences it. Like there is a war for talent, 
now many of the hotel chains do realize that okay you know now there are more cost involved in terms of recruiting and training them again so there is a reinvestment so i think every opportunity or uh, i would say adversity comes with a learning and uh, of course like it's a good opportunity for the industry also to build on this and further if this if in case unfortunately something happens like this in the times to come so then we are there resilient strong and being more pro protective about the people i'll ask a quick one uh, nivesh so i understand what you're trying to do you put the ceo and um, inspire the frontline staff fantastic and you create that magical moment there how do you make the high last how, you know how does the kick stay on for day 2 day 3 week 1 you know a month from there i think then again the entire talent management cycle comes into force that uh, uh, you know it's very interesting that uh, you know i was also reading a uh, report in deloitte that uh, you know monetary factors are not always premier thing but the engagement is a critical thing so of course once a frontline colleague is getting uh, engaged and recognized for that fact so of course there is a chain of events to keep any individual in the so it doesn't stop there so there should be more engagement for the people and then i feel that it always helps in reten retention of people and then building a positive organizational culture Thank you, you so much. much. Thank you.